You're watching Gold Rush and Rush, and we're recapping the Season 4 episode, The Resurrection. In this episode, we'll see 10 minutes of Parker Schnabel, 11 minutes of Todd Hoffman, 12 minutes of Dakota Fred, and 26 minutes of commercials, recaps, and previews. So what happened? Parker Schnabel is unhappy with the amount of material going through Big Red, so he decides to make some modifications. He changes out the deck screens to new ones with larger openings to allow more material to pass through. Once assembly is complete, Parker immediately runs the plan at 200 yards per hour, despite worries from everyone. Big Red immediately becomes overloaded, sending rocks spilling over the edge. As the rest of the crew clears the rocks away, Parker is left with only one choice, to stare intensely, swear, shout at the camera crew, and then storm away. Meanwhile, Chris lowers the running speed to 135 yards an hour. At the end of the week, the cleanout produces 112.8 ounces of gold, which displeases real miner Tony Beats and convinces Parker he should continue to run Big Red even harder. After the $100,000 cleanout from last week, Fred is able to buy the equipment Dustin needs to mine Cahoon Creek. But to get to the new site, he needs to strip over half the weight from the mini excavators to make them able to be transported by the helicopter's 2,000 pound weight limit. After removing both the tracks and the boom, will they be light enough to carry? Yes. The equipment is then transported piece by piece 3,000 feet above Porcupine Creek. The next morning they assemble both excavators but are unable to lift the wash plant hopper into position. They try using two excavators to lift it up, but it's too high. They try pivoting the hopper into position with just one excavator, but that doesn't work either. So as a last ditch effort, they easily remove the heavy grizzly bars in mere minutes, which allows them to lift the hopper by hand. They then replace the grizzly bars, hook up the water, set up the trommel, assemble the sluice, turn it on, and begin their search for gold. Remember last episode when the claim owner told Todd he had to pack up and go home? Well, just kidding. As apparently, they accidentally edited out the part where the claim owner said Todd can stay as long as he produces an arbitrary 14 ounces a week. So after a quick prayer, Todd's crew returns to work. After six additional hours of finding nothing, they finally find good ground with gravel that may produce something, the same thing they've said every week for months. They run their trommel through the night, which includes a dramatic battle with a slow-moving and sleepy snake. And all is well until their rock truck drives into a pit, nearly tipping over in the dark. At the end of the week, they do their clean-out and find only 2 ounces of gold and 15 diamonds, each diamond smaller than the next. Remember earlier in the episode when the claim owner told Todd he had to find 14 ounces or go home? Well, just kidding, again, as apparently he gets yet more time. But this time the claim owner is sending someone to watch over Todd, finally putting someone else in charge of the claim. Best lines. We better pray for a miracle, because that's what it's going to take. I guess now it's just time to pimp out my wash plant. The Hoffman crew faces an early end to their disastrous season. We're trying something new. If it works, it's going to be something great. If it works. I don't know if Parker got the message, but I know it took me more than one time to put my hand on a hot stove at age 18. Join us next time when Todd Hoffman may get to stay even longer at his claim, even though he is only able to find 12 ounces of soda, a half-eaten Twinkie, and a get-out-of-jail-free card.